Okay, let's now talk about the situation of a price floor. So we've got we've got our downward sloping demand curve here, upward sloping demand curve, uh, supply curve I should say here, and just to make it the same as the last example, let's assume that it uh, intersects at ten dollars here, um, that it intersects at, at one dollar here, and the market equilibrium is at five dollars over here, the price and a uh, quantity of ten dollars. Let's say that the government interferes in the market mechanism and introduces a price ceiling of say seven dollars. Uh, sorry, a price floor <laughs> of seven dollars. Now despite its name, price floors are up high. They're normally above the equilibrium point. And the whole point of a price floor is that it prevents the price from dropping uh, below um, that level. So the natural gravity of the market mechanism indicates that the price should actually move and gravitate towards um, towards this equilibrium point down here, but the, the price floor prevents that. Actually, I'm going to make this $7.50 just so it's, it's halfway in between $10 and $5 and it, it makes the numbers a bit easier. Okay, so, so where will the market actually operate at? Well, if, it, if there's no price floor, it would actually operate here, but the price floor prevents it from getting there. So it's either going to be sort of here at a quantity demanded of say five dollars, or at a quantity supplied of let's say uh, uh, of fourteen dollars or so. So it's either going to be one of those sort of two spots. Um, the place that it's actually going to transact at is here because even though suppliers are willing to supply a quantity of fourteen dollars at a price of seven dollars fifty, then buyers are actually only interested in and they only demand five units. And so it doesn't really matter that they're willing to supply 14. Buyers, buyers actually purchase uh, only five units. So this is what's called um, excess supply or surplus. And uh, that's the extra uh, product that's either sitting on shelves or needs to be purchased by the, by the government. Okay, so we've got that situation. Now what happens with consumer and producer surplus in this case? Well, consumer surplus under equilibrium, remember, it's this entire triangle here. Consumer surplus is the bonus amount, the, the amount that consumers uh, value the, the good or the service, um, uh, but they actually don't have to pay it. They only have to pay the $5 market price. So it's almost like a savings. It's a, it's a bonus. They go down to the shops. They're willing to pay, say, $9 for the good, but only have to pay $5. So normally consumer surplus is this entire triangle here. Um, what's happened here is, well, you work out consumer surplus by working out the point at which the market's going to operate. Draw a horizontal line to the um, to the vertical axis there, and consumer surplus is everything sort of between the demand curve and that horizontal line that you drew. So that's a consumer surplus, and um, this area here, and that's much smaller. That's obviously shrunk down significantly. Um, what's happened to producer surplus? Well, the way to work out producer surplus is you identify the point that the market's going to operate at, and then you sort of go down to the supply curve here, and then it's everything between that horizontal line and, um, and the supply curve down there. Now, how do you calculate the amount of the producer surplus? Well, and what's happened to it overall? Well, it used to be, the producer surplus used to be this area here, this triangle here under equilibrium, but now it's shifted to this shape here. Now it's just a matter of simply working out whether the extra rectangle here that's been gained in producer surplus is more than this triangle here. And in this case it will be. So producer surplus has actually gone up while consumer surplus has gone down significantly. Unfortunately, uh, and you can obviously calculate that, I mean this is a combination of a triangle here so you can go half base times height to actually work out the area of that triangle here. And then you can calculate the area of this rectangle here as just simply base times height. So you can actually work out the dollar amount uh, of that producer surplus here. But notice there's this area here that's been left wide. Uh, this is called a deadweight loss because before um, this little triangle here was distributed amongst consumers and producers, but now no one gets it. So this is the idea that that introducing this price floor here, it actually benefits producers potentially in terms of increasing their, their surplus here. 
Um, but consumers are, are definitely worse off, and society as a whole is worse off because the amount, even though producer surplus has increased, um, consumer surplus has decreased um, more than the, the suppliers have actually benefited from, from the price floor. And so this whole area of surplus here has evaporated, it's gone, and no one gets it. And that's called a dead weight, dead weight um, loss. That area here. And it's a price floor.